Revite Lives in Our Estuaries is a project funded by the Green Recovery Challenge Fund. It covers six estuaries on the North East Coast. They're all the way from the Blythe and the Wandsbeck in Northumberland, through the Tyne and the Weir and the Tees, down to the Esk here in Whitby. Well today we're trying to show people what things there are on the harbour um, because lots of people come here and enjoy the views and the landscape but there is quite a lot of uh, wildlife that uses the estuary at all times of year. We've seen some really unusual plants going on the sea walls here at Whitby including sea spleenwort which is one of the rarest ferns that you get in the UK. In the harbour area we're installing different living sea wall panels um, to go in areas where there's hard engineered walls and these will provide a natural little niche for wildlife to get a home so we're trying to create habitat for some of the seaweeds and the algae which then will provide food for the marine invertebrates which will then provide food for, for the bird life that's around here. Further upstream towards Whitehall Landing and, and, and Russop we're doing a small area of estuary enhancements where we're trying to put back some salt marsh and mud flat habitat we're installing a bushwood fascine along the edge of the river which will help to accrete mud and silt behind that fascine which will then be colonised by salt marsh plants and create this important priority habitat. Revitalising our estuaries isn't just about the ecological improvements to our estuaries, it's about engaging people with the river systems as well. So we're here at Hebben and Sunderland Sea Cadets. We are currently building the first of its kind um, a floating ecosystem that's going to go in the Tyne estuary up at Newcastle Quayside. We've been building up to this for about four years. Revitalising our estuaries has three strands, so we've got the employment side of it, which is all of our Kickstarters, who are our river estuary rangers, the community side of it, which is involving lots of volunteers on the ground to get stuff like this to happen. And then the third aspect is the nature-based solutions, so actually building stuff like the pontoon to put in the river and make nature happen on your doorstep. We'll have some young people down here volunteering. So our project is a project that works with 16 to 24 year old NEETs based within North Tyneside, Northumberland and Newcastle, helping them take steps towards employment, education or training. Everyone's absolutely loving it. Everyone's learning, getting new experiences. I started at Groundworks last year on a Kickstart, six month contract. And then after the six months, I got offered another 12 months. Took on like full time for Groundworks. And I like doing stuff with wildlife and been out in the countryside and stuff. It's like a shortened apprenticeship to give you like training and understanding to get you either a job in that similar type of work or set you up for work. And obviously when you do projects and you see it having like a positive outcome, it's good, it's like rewarding. Yeah, at Biomatrix what we do is create modular ecosystems and these are particularly focused on filling the gaps in ecological corridors, for example, the Tyne watershed where we've got lots of habitat upstream and then we've got the ocean and then we have this area between these two uh, ecosystems in the watershed that's basically the city of Newcastle. And as you can see around us, it's pretty industrial, pretty hard-edged, not a lot of habitat. This project is very much, um, it's the first of its kind with this type of dynamic tides big deflector on the front to deflect some of the flows that are going to be coming down the river. Things will be attaching to the underneath of the island, macroalgae, possibly some mussels. And most of the structure that we're building today is made from recycled material from drinking water pipes. And on top of that, we've got a planting substrate that blends some wood and clay materials, which is biomimicking some of the substrate that we would find on the riverbank here if we were to wind the clock back a thousand years. So yeah, it's been a lovely, great sunny day. We've, we've built a thousand square feet of floating ecosystem over the last two days. Uh, we're now planting it with native salt tolerant plant species that are gonna hopefully bed in and grow and flower and provide a beautiful nature island um, for, for the residents and the visitors to the quayside. Today we organized a butterfly walk at Riverside Park in Heaven. I had to share on social media and try to get people involved to come along with the event. Get them, get them a bit of information about local wildlife, especially butterflies. Today the uh, butterfly walk's been very successful. We spotted five different species and one of those species is a very rare one, which is the dingy skipper. And we've identified two of those today, so it shows the real success of the project. So it's really nice to know that it's still out in the boat and around. Yep. Yeah, definitely. So we're here today in Ridley Park 
and our estuary rangers are working with the Friends of Ridley Park to plant up this bank section here uh, with some different pine species to increase the, the biodiversity of the area. What we're planting today is Pinus radiata, the Monterey pine. There was some planted in the park about oh, nearly 20 years ago now. Um, sadly, Storm Arwen blew them over and they were a couple of my favourite trees in the park. So I collected the cones and then we got them sown and germinated and now they're coming back to their rightful place here in the park. These particular estuary ranges have been funded by the, the Northern Directions programme. So they're, they're young people um, coming to a job working with us. They get lots and lots of uh, training and lots of support while they're with us for their placement. Some of them have had their, their chainsaw training, strimmer training, uh, pesticide licences so that they can then go out into the world of work and in a much better position to be able to get a new job. So on the actual estuary itself, which is right next to Ridley Park, that's where we've been putting our interventions. Here on the River Blythe, some of the interventions that we've already installed here are the, the vertipools behind us on the, on the harbour wall. They're basically man-made rock pools that stick onto the side of the harbour wall with a textured surface for lots of different seaweeds and algae to grow on. And they also hold that water there for other creatures to live in, such as uh, shellfish and crabs. We've also got uh, underneath this commissioner's key, some hanging fish refuger that will go in. There's also the potential in the future to introduce some salt marsh plants, maybe planting those into uh, some of the gabion baskets along the along the harbour wall will help store more carbon, putting back spaces for nature in such a man-made estuary. Come down today with these young people from R Riverdale School and we've been showing them the site where we've built the enclosures for encouraging the little turns to come down. The main reason they're here, stop the general public walking through the areas where the bird's gonna nest and also stop dogs going in. A couple of weeks ago, we went to school and we made some clay models, which the children have since painted up. We've put them in the like, area over there so um, we can convince more birds to nest there. Today I've um, found rocks and shells but I've also found um, rare sort of flowers. Our plan for next year is we're going to treble the size of the site. We're also going to remove a lot of the grassland area. It's somewhere where predators can hide, they can raid the birds' eggs and then uh, the birds will move on again. So we're here in Sunderland on the River Weir. Uh, one of the interventions that we're doing here is on these concrete blocks behind me, these dolphins. They were part of the shipbuilding industry. We're trying to increase their potential to support nature. So what we're going to do is put some wooden frames on the top of them that will be planted up uh, with the right kind of species and we'll have some gravel and shingle on there as well to create a bird roosting habitat. We're also hoping to put some uh, verti pools, some vertical rock pools onto the side um, of the riverbank here which is very again man-made concrete sheet piling um, to again increase that space for nature, boost the biodiversity of the area. They'll hold some water back as the tide comes in and out of artificial rock pool environment and we're also going to make some concrete pod pools that will sit on the side of the riverbank here creating more space for nature providing that intertidal habitat that has been lost because of the industrialisation of the area. In the background you'll see the A189. Below the bridge is a small salt marsh going to be uh, building for scenes to try and help uh, re-establish more of the salt marsh. Today we're working on the Wandsbeck Dunes with a group of young people that we've employed from Northern Directions, removing invasive species the one they're working on at the moment is the Japanese rose, which is a non-native invasive species. Some of the other stuff that we'll be doing is removing ragwort, again another invasive species, along with the buckthorn. We're not actually removing most of it, we're just taking off the periphery and allowing the marum grass to actually grow and keep the natural habitat that it's already here. Uh, we're getting rid of Japanese rose, try and keep the roots. In tap, so it's just easy to pull up, but as you can see, the ground's not the nicest. And um, you get loads of licenses, so you get like your chainsaw license. I've already got, I'm already qualified for the state right now. It's a very good, like, train, traineeship to get into. Like, throughout the project, we've employed 36 young people in green jobs, directly engaged with over 2,000 people so far, with much more events planned. 
created and restored over 250 hectares worth of habitat. We've improved over 32,000 metres worth of footpath on the riparian corridors. As the Green Recovery Challenge Fund project comes to an end, we are looking to alternative means of funding further improvements on our estuaries in the North East. Groundwork has been successful in securing a grant from the Natural Environment Investment Readiness Fund to investigate the potential for generating green finance linked to nature-based solutions installed on our estuaries. To do this, we need to be able to measure and quantify the benefits of our interventions. We have employed, through the project, monitoring assistants who, with the University of Newcastle, have been monitoring and collecting data on all of our sites. This data will demonstrate the benefits such as carbon sequestration, biodiversity net gain or water quality improvements. Therefore, enabling groundwork to create a metric for estuary restoration, which we can use to attract investment. If you would like to support nature recovery in the North East through carbon offsetting, biodiversity net gain or your company's ESG requirements, do please get in touch. Groundwork would like to thank all of those who have taken part and supported revitalising our estuaries over the last five years.